Hey guys, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. So today we're going to be chatting about female fitness competitors. This is something that I've gotten a lot of questions about, um, specifically whether or not it is safe. There are a ton of popular female bodybuilders and fitness competitors on YouTube that have really made this idea of female bodybuilding and fitness competitions a lot more popular and well known. Now, before we get into anything, I want to, of course, flag um, that the information in this video is for education and entertainment purposes only and is not intended to prescribe or make any recommendations. So always speak to your doctor and a dietitian about your unique health case. Also, I want to, of course, remind you that I am wearing my snack shirt today and it's, it's getting a little tight with me and baby in here, but definitely check out the link below to see my entire merch line. So you definitely want to help support that because a portion of proceeds are going towards Sick Kids Foundation. Okay, now let's get into the video. I first want to talk a little bit about a typical fitness competitor's diet. Now, every competitor's diet and plan is going to totally depend on their coach, their category, and the state of their body when they begin. But generally speaking, there is a bulking phase, which is where you're maybe trying to build muscle, often with a caloric increase. And later, there's a cutting phase, and that's where you're trying to lose body fat while still maintaining as much of that muscle mass that you can. Note that putting your body into a catabolic and anabolic state at the same time is really, really hard to do, but more on that later. Now, I'm gonna to be totally transparent. I'm not super jazzed about what is going on to prepare young women to have to step on the stage and have their bodies critiqued. But I also acknowledge that you have every right to want to change your body to look a certain way, and I have zero right or desire to judge that. That is not what this video is about. What I want to talk about is some of the risks and concerns that have been uncovered in the literature that are specific and unique to this population so that you can embark on your health and fitness journey in the healthiest way possible. First of all, let's talk about the physical dangers and risks, starting with potential nutrition deficiencies. One of the major concerns with bodybuilding and fitness competition prep is the risk for micronutrient deficiencies. And this is because of the tendencies for some bodybuilders to have to severely restrict certain foods in their diet and only include a small range of repeated safe foods on their plan. Some studies on dieting competitors observe deficiencies in micronutrients like vitamin D, calcium, zinc, magnesium, and iron. Having said that, a lot of this evidence is from the early days of bodybuilding, so it's very possible that these micronutrient deficiencies were maybe more common in those days due to very premature understanding of bodybuilding nutrition and drastic elimination diets. We've definitely come a long way. Having said that, in a lot of cases, especially for women, it may be useful to take a multivitamin if you are severely restricting calories or certain types of food in preparation for competition. There is also the common risk of fluid imbalances. Now in the final days and hours before a fitness competition, also known as peak week, many bodybuilders will attempt to manipulate their fluid and electrolyte levels to improve their muscularity and to get them that kind of ripped appearance. Now in order to define their muscularity, during that final week, bodybuilders will kind of dramatically increase their water intake, sometimes to as much as 10 liters per day, while also taking diuretics. Then the day before the competition, bodybuilders may be instructed to dramatically cut their water intake in order to dehydrate their body, sometimes getting no water for 24 hours before showtime while continuing on their diuretic supplements. Now I know we've been conditioned to believe that more water is better, but drinking 10 liters of water a day and then flushing that out with diuretics can easily cause water intoxication, hyponatremia, and hypokalemia, which taken together may be fatal. Other side effects can include irregular heartbeat, fatigue, seizures, GI distress, muscle cramping and weakness, headaches, and more. Playing with water might even make you look too flat depending on how and when it's done. So you could actually put yourself at risk and not even get the desired look for competition. Now let's talk about some supplement concerns. While the supplement industry's market is worth as much as $37 billion a year, most researchers and healthcare professionals caution their use because there really isn't clear evidence that they work and are beneficial to our health. On top of that, 
because supplements are not necessarily so well regulated, there are a ton of illegal substances that make their way onto store shelves, and honestly, they have killed people. According to a 2016 study, it's estimated that around 23,000 emergency room visits a year are linked to supplements. Because of the lack of regulation, consumers don't really know all of the ingredients in supplements, and dosages could even vary from pill to pill. That is really scary stuff, and we need greater regulation if it's causing people to die. There's also potential side effects of some common supplements used for fitness competition, from anxiety, insomnia, kidney and liver damage, infertility, and even death. You really have to trust your coach to prescribe these cocktails of supplements and drugs in appropriate doses for you. I don't know about you, but that feels like it takes a lot of trust. Now let's talk about some of the psychological risks, including body dissatisfaction and disordered eating. In one study, one third of a group of bodybuilders reported anxiety, short tempers, or anger during competition prep. Furthermore, 81.5% of them in the group reported a preoccupation with food, which is a precursor, of course, to disordered eating. This is especially a concern among female fitness competitors, as one study found that among female competitive bodybuilders, about 42% used to be anorexic, 67% were terrified of becoming fat, and 50% experienced uncontrollable urges to eat. Furthermore, research gathered from the National Eating Disorders website found that among female high school athletes, 41.5% reported disordered eating, and disordered eating affected 62% of female athletes in aesthetic weight class sports. I'll also just never forget a story that my personal trainer told me about the competition floor. He said that young female competitors all bring these suitcases filled with cookies, candies, cupcakes, donuts, you know, all the things that they haven't allowed themselves to eat while doing their prep diet. Then the moment that they get off stage, they tend to go crazy and literally eat until they make themselves sick. So while you may look at a fitness competitor and assume that they are the picture of perfect health, it's very possible that some of these behaviors may tell a very different story. This is just another perfect example of how one's physical body is not necessarily a great depiction of their actual health. You really cannot judge a book by its cover. Now let's talk about my bread and butter, fertility. Anytime that you're severely restricting calories or increasing activities, you put a woman at risk for hormonal imbalance, which may in turn impact fertility and overall health. In one study, 25% of female bodybuilding competitors reported abnormal menstrual cycles, while another study reported that women complained of menstrual irregularity within the first month of competition prep. The researchers found that caloric restriction led to a decline in fat and body mass, which resulted in the absent menstrual cycle. Restrictive diets, excessive exercise, low body weight and nutrition deficiencies from bodybuilding can lead to what we call the female athlete triad, which is a condition defined by A, low energy available with or without disordered eating, B, menstrual dysfunction, and C, low bone density. Research has also found that both resistance training and energy restriction are associated with alterations in key reproductive hormones, ultimately resulting in estrogen deficiency. Not only does this have an impact on fertility, but a lack of estrogen can also cause a disruption in bone remodeling, which can increase the risk of fractures and ultimately osteoporosis. Finally, let's chat about the big elephant in the room, weight and metabolic declines. One of the main criticisms of rapid weight loss or low calorie diets is that it may slow down a person's metabolic rate. This in turn makes it very difficult and potentially even virtually impossible to keep the weight off once a person stops dieting and resumes to normal eating, even if their normal eating is still very balanced and healthy. This combined with the psychological drive to binge eat all of the forbidden foods after a show makes it very easy to see how a lot of female fitness competitors kind of bounce up to an even higher weight post-show than they were before they began. Not surprisingly, there are a lot of hormonal adaptations to blame for these shifts. One, studies have found that a low calorie diet may decrease thyroid hormone levels, which can decrease a person's overall metabolic rate. Two, Leptin, which is our fullness hormone, lives in body fat. So when we lower our body fat levels, leptin levels also decline. 
Studies have shown that a low calorie diet with an effort to promote fat loss may decrease leptin levels, resulting in competitors feeling basically constantly hungry and prompting them to overeat. Three, ghrelin, which is our hunger hormone, increases in the body when we fast, so researchers have found that a low calorie diet can increase ghrelin, stimulating participants to eat more. Four, research has also found that a low calorie diet decreases our natural testosterone levels. And since testosterone plays an important role in increasing muscle protein synthesis and muscle mass, it could negatively impact metabolically active muscle mass. And five, research has found that a low calorie diet may increase cortisol, which has been shown to increase protein breakdown in healthy subjects, again, impacting metabolically active tissue. Bottom line, before I leave you, let's get one thing straight. I am by no means trying to say that you shouldn't become a female fitness competitor or bodybuilder if that is what brings you joy. My job as a dietitian is to try to understand this athletic trend, to dive into the culture and explore the possible concerns with following this type of lifestyle, and of course to give you the tools that you need to do it in the safest way possible. My recommendation? Seek out an experienced sports dietitian who can really help guide you through this process in the safest way possible. And do a real deep dive to ensure that you're psychologically ready for what it entails. Personally, I know that this would take me to some dangerously dark places, so it would never be a healthy sport for me. I'm simply presenting the literature and what it has uncovered in terms of concerns and risks, and that way you can hopefully make the most informed choices for yourself. On that note, please keep the comments kind and respectful. If you yourself have found something that has helped you along on your fitness journey, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Like I said, leave us lots of great comments. I'd love to hear your experiences. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.